انا بقول ده كله ما حصل يعني حتى المناطق اللي استعادت القوات المسلحه All these allegations are baseless. None of these reports are true. We challenge anyone to visit the areas recaptured by the armed forces and find a single village that has been torched. In fact, there hasn't been any aerial bombing, not a single village was destroyed. But of course, because of the operation, some people have fled, but they went to government-controlled areas. They sought safety and refuge where the government and armed forces are present. That, of course, is proof that the government does not target citizens. ده دليل واضح ان الحكومه لا تستهدف المواطنين. The UN says that over 100,000 people have been displaced since January alone uh, because of the because of the fighting there. Um, but the problem is that it says it's denied access to the area. Uh, will you provide a safe passage for humanitarian assistance? اول حاجه ده رقم مبالغ فيه ما حاصل. This figure is highly inflated. 100,000 is not real. Only a very small number of people have been displaced and they have either reached our positions or where the UN peacekeepers are deployed and there are aid workers there. Are you asking the UN to leave? The UN forces and UNAMID have no vital role to play, not even in defending themselves and their units. And now as peace has returned to Darfur, I think that they have no role to undertake and that's why we want them to leave. Are you also thinking of having the aid workers to leave the country? There's no food crisis in Darfur. There was a drought last season in all Sudan except in Darfur. It had an excellent amount of rainwater. Darfur produced great amounts of food. And therefore, there is no valid reason for these relief agencies to stay in Darfur. But we're still talking about two and a half million people who are in these camps in Darfur. Do you have the capacity to feed them if, if you ask the UN and humanitarian workers to leave? I'm telling you that the number is too much inflated. The exact number of all displaced people in Darfur is 160,000. As for those figures of millions, well, they are incorrect. And like I said, we have no problem feeding these people. Now, the International Criminal Court has uh, charged you with uh, multiple counts of uh, uh, genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity. Are you worried that the warrants may be served at any point in the future? This is a politicized tribunal. You are with us in Darfur and you have seen for yourself how the huge crowds came to greet me. These are the same crowds I'm accused of having committed genocide and ethnic cleansing against them. This is why I've defied the tribunal and I've been traveling freely around the world. I took advantage of my defiance of the ICC to mobilize the Sudanese people in the last election to support me. You haven't taken us to the refugee camps. We haven't been able to talk to those people in the refugee camps. I really wished a visit to one of the camps had been part of my itinerary. I wanted to visit a camp in Niala. You, you've been the head of state for more than 25 years. I'd like to know, do you feel personally fulfilled and how long do you intend to stay in power? One of the most difficult jobs here is being the president of Sudan. There are lots of problems around us and the country is targeted from different sides. The Sudanese people are highly political. This job is very exhausting. But this will be my last term, and it will end in 2020. So this is your last mandate? Yes, this is my last mandate, inshallah. And in 2020, there will be a new president? 2020. In 2020, there will be a new president, and I will be an ex-president, God willing.